Um, today I'm going to look at uh, the cable to connect up my um, Rack 15 boiling vessel up to the power supply in the uh, the back of an, an FFR vehicle. So um, most FFR vehicles have something like this box here, which is a 45 amp. Uh, distribution power distribution box okay each of the three terminals on the side will each take 15 amps which um, is enough to run the rack 15 boiling vessel which by its name the 15 refers to the, the amp rating of the cooker so it's going to take um, quite happily the, the 15 amp however the cables to go from these to the boiling vessel are few and far between, almost impossible to get hold of. Um, so we're going to have a bit of a video on how to make them. Right, so um, we're going to put this aside for the minute, which out of the way. And um, we're going to show you the, the bits we're going to need for today. Right, so we have here the um, two pin cable, um, normally for connecting up a uh, Klansman uh, intercom system in a vehicle uh, it has uh, male, male one end female the other and what we've done is we've cut the cable um, I always cut the cable with a little bit of spare on and that means that if I'm going to use this in the future then I've got some wires for reference um, but also um, if I need a short cable then I can um, I can make that up. So that that's that's a handy little tip is if you if you've got the cable to spare, always give yourself about six inches of spare there um, so that we can reuse the cable uh, another way. Um, big long cable so that we can then have the option of where we're going to place our boiling vessel. Um, and what I've done is I have stripped uh, a short bit of wire um, from the, the end of this um, because it's a blue blue sorry if, because it's a 24 volt vehicle okay um, it's blue wire brown wire instead of black wire red wire yep yeah, so it's blue wire brown wire instead of red wire black wire like it would be in a 12 volt vehicle okay it's just a little bit of strengthening uh, cord there um, so this is two pin that end Okay, and the plug on the end of the boiling vessel is a three pin connector. Okay, this is the, the, the type um, that goes on to the actual boiling vessel. Um, it's a uh, really good design. Um, these plugs cost about £35 um, just for that plug. This cable cost about uh, £20 second hand. Um, so yeah, £50 for a two metre cable is uh, is a bit um is a bit extreme however these cables have been going for about the same price as the cookers when, when you can find them if you can find them um so plug comes in lots and lots of parts uh, and it's a sold solder together connection so that that's uh, something that, that we've got sitting here ready um just a cheap um, soldering iron again. Um, I, I haven't bought an expensive one. Cost me seven pounds in Aldi. So that, that's the, the cheapest part of the whole setup. Right, so when we've got our boiling vessel, <coughs> the, um, the actual boiling vessel came with the instruction book. And in the instruction book, it tells us what the wiring for the pins is. Um, we'll just find that page and then we will get to our project. So in the troubleshooting section of the manual, there is a, a flow chart on how to test the electrical cables. And, and as part of that, it tells us that we connect the positive part of the probe to A and the negative part of the probe to B and that that also means that uh, pin C on these plugs isn't connected at all. So that that's um, it's only two wire to two wire, 
and there's, there's a, a pin on the three pin plug that isn't used. So we're going to connect our positive, which is going to be our brown wire to pin A and our negative, which is our blue wire to pin B. Nice and simple. Right, so what we're going to have to do, first of all, is we're going to have to strip a little bit of the end of the wire. Get my wire strippers from over here. There we go, strip the end of the end bit. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to tin a little bit of the, the two ends of, of these wires so that they, they have some solder already on them. So my soldering iron's already nice and hot. We're just putting a little bit of solder onto these wires just to make them a little bit more handleable later on. Okay. Right, um, really important thing we need to do is make sure that our uh, plug um, is put together in the right order. So we've got to have our um, screw fittings on first and we also have uh, a rubber connection here, okay? Um, which is the, the seal that actually grip the wires a little bit and seal it all up. So if we look, um, our connection there is A and the one at the bottom there is B. Um, the, the rubber is uh, labelled up with B. Um, so B should be the negative blue and A, which is the top right, should be the positive brown. Okay, trying to do this as neatly as possible. Okay. These connections are already pre-soldered. Uh, so that helps us out. Um, right, so I'm going to do our negative, which is our blue, first of all. A little bit of heat down in there. get our solder set um, and that was already in and then we're going to try the same again with A, heat that up Okay, so we're stuck there. I'm just going to add a little bit more solder to those two joints just so they're good and secure. I should have put this in a vise to, to stop it moving around. Solder in there, make it nice and happy. On the same again in there. So uh, we then cool that down a little, uh, make sure it's all set up. Um, and I've got one little stray wire in there that I need to deal with so that it doesn't touch any of the other terminals. Just stick it in the solder. 
we go. Oh, just like that. Pull that off, and then we're going to put our uh, rubber seal over the top. Nice and securely in there. That are there. The clamping piece. And then the rear half of the plug, um, which screws onto the front half. Probably good to get this fairly good and tight, but you don't want to use any grips or something because you might deform the plug and then it's not going to uh, clamp very well um, into uh, into the, the cooker itself. We're then got a cable grip. That should be us with our 12 volt supply plug. Okay, two pin one end, three pin the other. So that can go into the um, 15 amp supply um, from the vehicle and then into the plug in the rack 15 or the, the, the other model, which is actually the one that I have. Um, and that should power that up. And we shall do a little test um, to check that it works. Right, so we're now all set up for our bit of a test. Um, I've got my power supply here that ha has been set up to a uh, pair of batteries that are connected. So we've got a nice uh, 24 volt supply. Okay. We've got our cable that we've made. Okay. Uh, that connects up over here to our supply. Cables will only go in one way. There we go. So that's set up in there. Okay. And then we've got our boiling vessel down here. Nice and shiny new still. Even still got all our plugs on our ends. And a very long screw up here there we go right okay so we're all tied up there okay that means that we have our 24 volt right up to our cooker okay um, I'm going to take out our inner pot because we're just going to try and boil um, our pint of water here Right, so we're back again. Uh, now we've got uh, four pints of water in our boiling vessel and I would suggest that it is about a third full. So it could well be that this will take about 12 pints of water, which is certainly a few brews um, on, a, on an exercise or something like that. Um, so that, that's um, good and handy for, for my uses. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to close it up. So that we're keeping the heat in. And we're going to give it a try. We've got a green light at our first position. Okay. So that means it's going to start slowly heat up. Or we're going to flick that over to position two, which is our high position. And we'll see how long it takes to heat up this, um, this container. 